Hello everybody and welcome back to Hearthstone Champions League. This is Nimsh and I'm here with Aqua Blood and we are going to witness an amazing match. Thais, European champion and self-proclaimed best player in the world, Ecop. <laughs> yep, and this is for the money now. $1,500 on the line when these players will be closing down their client with no money and one of them will probably continue playing uh, some Hearthstone, maybe some Overwatch with $1,500 in their pocket. Oh yeah, it's it's really good money, especially if you want to travel to the future Dream Hacks or any LAN tournaments. It's always good to have uh, that money to be able to to make that travel. So uh, for them, it's also about uh, the pride. So Thais was um, visibly upset playing versus Pavel. He felt like he maybe didn't have um, the, the the draws he wanted, the matchups he wanted. So now versus Ecop, he'll try his best to to take it as well. Finds a Molten Giant in the opening hand. That's not too bad going against an aggressive deck. Demon Wrath, of course, that AoE, but it doesn't affect those pesky little demons from Ecop. Uh, anti Healbot will uh, be able to sustain him with Shadow Flame being an AoE clear. But look at this uh, the dynamic duo themselves Void Walker and Flame Imp, the classic of the zoo, uh, the zoo starts, I would say. Yeah, the orange blue contrast, right? <laughs> the orange and blue. Yeah, it does and this work. is a pain. In, this is a pain for Tice. Have that in the start. Haunted Creeper coming down next potentially, unless he finds like a knife juggler, and a very strong start, a very aggressive start from Ecar. One that Demon Wrath doesn't do anything to really. Exactly, it's like it's the, making the card almost dead. Like you Demon Wrath is bored, and you put two more, like one more power because Haunted Creeper actually turns into two spiders. But just before we go into uh, more discussion, Nick. I want to say that this matchup overall is very good for Reno Lock. It should be very good for Reno Lock. You know, with those AoE clears, there's a, a very easy way to deal with a very board centric deck like Zoo. The only uh, issue Reno Lock does have is because there's so many one offs, you can be quite inconsistent in drawing those uh, area effects clear like. Uh, Hellfire, Twisted Never, for example. Absolutely. But the one thing Ecop has now is he has so much pressure on board. Yeah, Ecop has this this one big chance uh, right now. This was exactly the opening that you need versus Reno Lock because even though it's a good matchup for Reno Lock, um, as you said, you can still lose if Zoo has a really explosive opening and you miss those really important cards. So I'm I'm curious if Tyus will be able to to come back and uh, and actually clear this board e easier. So now he's uh, thinking about Twilight Drake or Implosion. Implosion not only deals with one minion for, for sure, but also puts some power on board. And it deals with a demon, which uh, Demon Wrath can't clear at the moment. So maybe once he clears his Void Walker with one of the imps, uh, he'll only be left with minions which are affected by Demon Wrath. And uh, that will definitely be great for him because he'll get kind of a cheap AoE clear. And then Shadow Flame can maybe be used for something later. Also, it's an interesting to mention, I think, that because this matchup is so bad, Ecop will have to make more risks or more risky plays to maybe ignore the Molten Giant or hope there is no Reno to heal and overextend as well and hope there is no AoE to be able to grab this matchup and uh, just to win this before Tyus gets those, those key cards. And like you said, taking a risk now, he's going to just invest all that damage to the face, hoping there's no heal bots, no Renos. He does go for a couple of clears. Uh, is he going to clear with the one? I don't. I think it Why makes would... sense. Uh, the right now the Reno decks they play power overwhelming as well. So if you invest into killing the small minions, you do play around power overwhelming uh, Shadow Flame, which uh, he wasn't able to clear everything. So a power overwhelming top deck would be pretty good, but he did play around Molten Giant Shadow Flame at least. Although Molten Giant can come down with a Sun Fairy Protector if he chooses. So. I like Demon Wrath, I think. Demon Wrath as well. Yeah, don't clear the brand, though. That's the only problem. Yeah, but you do kill the spiders and uh, two ones. And you can still play Molten Giant after that. Oh, that's true. So, yeah. I think that's fine. Uh, you're not expecting a lot of burst damage coming from... Uh, from Ecop at this point, simply because he's already played too abusive, he only has five mana next turn. So even if he had a Dark Iron Dwarf, uh, it wouldn't be enough to clear him out. So a kind of safe Molten Giant could come down here. And if Ecop invests too much into the board next turn, he has a potential Shadow Flame target, but he also has a good Sun Fairy target as well. Oh man, <laughs> he wanted to play the Flame Imp, but six damage to face. Fireball self. It doesn't feel good. 
That was he, he might have to play it anyway. <laughs> he is good on health, and that's perfect. A perfect minion with that defender of Argus just buffing two targets with plus two plus two. Yeah, that's a, a good little board he's got there. But as we know, uh, Tice has a very good response to this in Shadow Flame. He may even find another way to deal with this board. Mm -hmm. Is there any other way you can do it without investing in Shadow Flame? Um, you can still go for Twilight Drake and Sun Fury. Uh, that's one of the options you have. Just yeah. building a, a bigger board. If you Shadow Flame, you're not developing anything. So, I kind of like. It's too the, slow. Yeah. Even yeah, I prefer not the giant. That's not a bad idea either. I mean, depends how frightened you feel, I guess. All right, I guess at this point you 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 do feel threatened. And if that would be like power volming and doom guard, that might have been lethal, right? So. And this is a point of the game where Ecop is getting kind of grinded out, and it's going to be very hard for him to find a win. Double power overwhelming is definitely a card which will help him find that win, but unfortunately, with this big taunt wall in front of him, it's going to be very tough to punch through this by investing some cards or to, having some patience at least, and uh, just trying to get a, a board down. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, the numbers are quite quite weird for Ecop as well, because if you use Power of Whelming, um, you will have to use both of them to clear one of the minions. Like, the 5-4 clears the 8-4, but then, like, if you use double power, you will need to kill the 4-7 with the Imp, and then they use second power on the 2-3 two, two to kill the Giant. After that, you can play Nerubin Egg, but it's, like, super slow. And you're losing that power that you actually need to to win this game. But yeah, yeah it looks like a bit of patience here from Ecarp. Yeah, absolutely. Drop the knife juggler hits. Oh, that doesn't make too much of a difference. I guess he could just clear out this. Oh, is he going to leave the giant up? I guess the giant does get cleared by the knife juggler, but the sun fairy does deal with the knife juggler, and we do see a dark bomb entice his hand, so he does have potential here for maybe imp gang boss. Argus, taunt up more. You can heal bot into dark bombs. Silence. A lot of different it's so good, silence though. as well. Uh, there's a lot of different paths uh, Tys can go down here with his play. Yeah, I, I think this is this is exa exactly what we talked about. Even though it seems like the zoo has a good opening, Reno Lock is built to win versus those kinds of decks. And uh, with this play from Tys, I think there's nothing that Eagle can draw to be able to to win this game at this point, especially looking at that heal bot. He doesn't even need Reno. He has he has the kill next turn. Eco needs to somehow survive, not not die to those minions, and then still be able to to pressure ties. Oh, it hits for four. If that hit for two, that would have been devastating. Four six plus two eight uh, eleven one damage off. One damage off, he can clear the board. Uh, he could just heal bot now and then just smoke face if he wants. Uh, again, like a lot of different paths uh, these decks can take. When you have so many one offs in your deck, uh, it creates a lot of different kind of possibilities uh, when going forward. I guess you could just clear the imps and play it safe at this point. And uh, there's no rush to beat him, especially as we know Tice is running the combo variation as well. Shadow Flame Imp. <laughs> you don't see that very often. Yeah. Well, it did work perfectly. And with Feather of Argus, I think he steals this game. There's no way you can go through uh, the 3 4 and a 3 2. Uh, the, the only way I can see would be Dark Peddler into Soul Fire, then Life Tap into Dark Peddler into Soul Fire. <laughs> the most common of ways to, uh, to deal with this. But yeah, he does try to stay alive here. Argus in Siphon Soul is the perfect answer there. Siphon saw that imp away and just slam in the face. Taking the first game, Tice beats the Warlock uh, with his very own Warlock, the Reno Jackson version, and uh, takes a 1 0 lead. Yeah, Ecop disappointed that it uh, slipped away from his fingers, but to be honest, like it was it was a really bad matchup to begin with. And um, even though he got that, let's say, god start for, for the zoo, to be able to, um, to grab this game, Ty still had uh, a really decent hand himself to be able to protect himself. And he still uh, even didn't play Reno, like he didn't need the Reno. That was enough to win. The one thing to consider with Ecop's lineup, uh, of all the decks he's got, they all have a, a decent chance against Druid. Yeah. Now, Druid can win any match, in my opinion, uh, with the right draws. It's not one that suffers from really lopsided matchups. 
But uh, if there's one deck Ecop will be hoping to beat consistently with the decks he's got so far is Druid. And that's not generally a great game plan in my opinion. You never want to build a lineup against a deck that is known for consistency. Uh, you kind of want to target uh, decks that have more lopsided matchups. But maybe that might be what Ecop needs in able to, to win this game. Just getting the you know free good draws against that Druid and being able to, to win the series that way. I think what what Ecop is also targeting, like Druid is uh, one of the decks that he actually has a good lineup against, but uh, his lineup is also really good versus Secret Paladin. And um, that served him well during the group stages, and he was able to, to be here in the top four exactly because of that and his skills. But unfortunately for him, Thais is actually not playing a Paladin, he's playing a Rogue instead. Did Ecop use the same lineup? The exact same lineup? I believe so, yeah. Definitely Patron and uh, Temple Mage. and Z Yeah, yeah, exactly the same lineup. So yeah, well, they did him find the group stage, like you said. Uh, he's definitely not out of this just yet. He does run the Patron into the Rogue. Now, how do you feel about this matchup? This is not something we get to see uh, much anymore. So, I think this matchup was good for the Rogue. Um, it was assumed to be good for the Rogue before the Warsong nerf. Uh, some people argued because sometimes you just can combo out with Warsong. And after Warsong nerf, I think it, it got better for Rogue. Because Rogue can um, just, when the patrons show up, like patrons are not the win condition anymore, most of the times. Like as a Rogue, you just keep your Deadly Poison and Flurry, and you can deal with the, with the patrons. And um, you still can fight really well for the early board to steal the tempo from the Warrior. Um, and deal a lot of damage with the burst, so I think the, the matchup is better for Rogue, but it's not like it, 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 it's at maximum sixty percent. I would I would I would even say it's like fifty five percent for the Rogue, forty five percent for the Patron. I mean, the Patron can now play this kind of strong mid range tempo game, which they didn't really play before when they were a more combo centric deck. So uh, that's one thing the Rogue can struggle with. The more sticky minions like the Shredder, uh, they do have great answers to stuff like uh, the patron turns but like you said it's not a it's not a major win condition for, it's one of the win conditions for patron but it's not the, the primary win condition they do have dr boob they do have grom these days uh however this is looking pretty good for tice so far he does have a free five down which will generate one ones but those one ones do not interact well with patrons but the death spite will be able to clear this up quite nicely yeah, that's why it's pretty good for, for Ecop. Um, exactly what you want to have on turn 4. I'm pretty sad that it rotates out. I, it was a really good weapon for the last uh, last year almost. Uh, but I'm interested to see what people actually start bringing to, to the standard tournaments instead. Um, that Death Spite is really good. It, it countered that Violet Teacher. And right now, Tyus has, has nothing to play. Like, no minion. Like it, Even if you have a minion, it would still die to Death Spite. But having no minion is even worse. Another issue he has as well is this Acolyte drawing uh, multiple cards. He's going to give uh, Ecop two cards regardless. He's going to give him three armor as well. So he had to invest the backstab and the fan just to clear the board. Uh, but this Death Spite is going to be held on to by Ecop, I can imagine. Waiting for that minion to come down. And Tice does have a Sludge Belch in X. So that does clear that up quite nicely. Yeah, that's why Death Spider was one of the best cards as well, just uh, killing almost every 5-drop that can be played uh, without the loss. Um, so is it Sludge Belcher still? The Sludge Belcher at least will uh, block the Shredder from attacking with the 1-2 token. And then on turn 6, yeah, it doesn't look good for Tice overall, it's it's really awkward. Like He would need to find something like a, a, like Preparation maybe on the next turn to be able to Azure Drake and sap something or, or Eviscerate. Ecop didn't find the Patience as well. The one thing Ecop did find is a Battle Rage, so he does have an option here to, say, clear the first part of the Belcher, uh, fin finish off the 1-2. It does open his shred up to the Dagger, but he can draw two cards. If he really wants to kind of fish for cards, he can even Acolyte of Pain first and draw loads of cards. Uh, but it looks like he's just going to keep the Acolyte in hand, get some armor, and go for the Battle Rage off this, to this time. What could he play for two mana after this, which would be effective? Well, Battle Rage, right? Oh, uh, after, after the Battle mana. Rage is resolved. Um, he can uh, play a weapon. Uh, there is no weapon removal, so it's absolutely fine to have that uh, weapon to be able to, to slam it on the next turn uh, into something. By the way, like uh, a small nostalgic thing, like b behind Ecop, there is uh, a wall with a lot of WoW TCG playmats. They're like mouse pads, and uh, they have a lot of 
Warcraft art with like Spectral Kitten or there's a nice Orc Death Knight. And I did spot Van Cleef if you look on the left yeah, side. Yeah, there is a Van Cleef as well. Yeah, you're right. I was quite curious to what they were. Uh, I saw Van Cleef, I was like, oh, is it like a Hearthstone poster? And then I could start to look at the other arts and I couldn't quite see what some of them were, so they all look like they belong to a set. So I kind of assumed maybe it was the, the YTCG. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's quite a nice collection. All right, so back to the game. Um, Ecop is in the lead for now. Uh, he still has Gromash available with Enrage, which is very important in this game. He'll be able to just deal 12 damage out of nowhere. So this turn, if can he set up lethal in two turns? If he goes for something like a Shredder and um, and Frauding maybe, killing um, the Azure Drake with Armorsmith and Weapon, that might be quite good. Yeah, he has the Inner Rage Grom coming up as well. So how much damage? So that'll be the one hit from the weapon. So the Frothing will go up to five. Then you have the Shredder as well. And the Inner Rage on Grom will put the Frothing up to six. So um, I think it's enough if there is just Dr. Boom being played. So basically, if he attacks in the minion now, uh, Frothing goes to five, and then Inner Rage is... Uh, oh, he uses Inner Rage here instead of having it for Grom. Interesting. I think probably was probably best to keep a hold of that inner rage for that Grom turn. Was it? It was definitely lethal, right? Yeah, yeah. With Grom inner rage, it was lethal um, because Frodding would go to um, to five this turn, and then with inner rage, it would go to six, and then it's ten plus twelve, twenty two, twenty five with weapon attack. Nah, he caught missing on opportunity there. Well, Dr. Boom is being played. Uh, is Dr. Boom the play, though? Um, or can Ties do something else? Mm, what could he do? He could sap. Uh, SI, weapon clear, eviscerate. That's quite clean. Yeah, that's really good. That's a, a good answer there to uh, threats on board. So the, lethal, the, the missed poten lethal potential doesn't really matter, ultimately, since Ties had a, a nice answer to this board. Yeah, Man. it was. Uh, it would be quite a lucky setup, right? Like you set up lethal uh, that's uh, not fully visible for your opponent yet, and you hope he plays Doctor Boom on seven and does nothing with your board. But you're facing a rogue with what, like seven cards in hand. <laughs> so there was a big potential that your board is getting hit anyway. So we're gonna see low fab and acolyte. I don't know if I prefer maybe Shredder Death Spite. I don't know, what do you play, what, what, what do you play next turn? I, I guess it's uh, both ways fill up the mana curve, but at least Lofeb stops some removal, from spell-wise at least, so he's going to guarantee probably 5 damage next turn from that Lofeb alone. Yeah, it's quite alright, especially because you want to Whirlwind, um, possibly. Whirlwind, you can Whirlwind execute, um, attack phase first and Whirlwind execute and uh, Shredder. Or don't, you don't even have to really whirlwind. Yeah, like you can run, run your acolyte into seven seven. See what you draw, then execute, and then play maybe death spite and go nine to face. Uh, play the shredder, try to prepare the kill. Yeah, I think I prefer that. Put a lot of pressure on board. Uh, do a lot of damage to the face as well with that nine damage coming in from the weapon and the low fab. And you have a stickier minion as well. So not only is this five five body posing a big threat. So also at the four three with the death rattle, so things are looking pretty good for Ecop at this point. Yeah, they look amazing because not only he has um, just a weapon and Grom in hand to finish things off. He if if there is a sludge belcher showing up, he can also try to whirlwind maybe and execute. Uh, if one minion survives, he will be able to go for the one two. Uh, if there are some heals, he still has minions on board, and uh, after that sprint, ties cannot do much. He doesn't really find anything he needs at this point. A sap would have been great. Another eviscerate would have been great. Uh, he does get the fan of knives from the prep. He may find that sap or that eviscerate he needs now. He does eviscerate this, so you can clear the low feb. And also, uh, oh, one damage, mana addict. Uh, well, he's dead yep. anyway, but uh, he's, he's dead, doing his yeah. best. <laughs> he's doing his best with like clearing this board and uh, also thinking mana, mana addict. Is a tricky card here because Lothab is an honest five. You know it's five, right? But with Mana Addict, he thinks that Ikov has lethal with just spells, and uh, so he's just uh, shrugging there. But you know, it's it will be possible with the Mana Addict to get to give Ikov like a ninja lethal. 
if he will, he will have like a whirlwind into battle rage, into inner rage, into slam somewhere, uh, then mana addict can actually just kill ties without ground. Yeah. That card has a lot of potential, uh, depending on what style of deck you're playing. I mean, from in many minion-centric decks, which don't have a lot of spells, it doesn't have a huge impact. But like you said, uh, with, say, a Patron Warrior or maybe a, an, oil, an Oil Rogue, there's a lot of spells that can be used. So, uh, yeah, you can, like I said, get a cheeky lethal there without them even realizing, just because of all the spells you have in your hand. Absolutely. All right, so this is a... Tie, I believe. Yeah, it's 1 1, and now Ecop can finally play his Temple Mage, a deck I'm really excited about because nobody else played it in the groups. Like, he was the only one to bring it, and he had a lot of success of it. And now he goes into the Druid matchup as well, and this is where Temple Mage can really shine. Uh, this is probably one of the worst matchups for Druid, Absolutely. I would say. Especially with a Mana Worm. I mean, Mana Worm is a huge part of the Temple Mage deck. Uh, getting that Mana Worm down straight away with a combination of spells. And maybe a Sorcerer's Apprentice can be a bit too much for a Druid to deal with. But Tice does have cards in his hand which can deal with stuff like Mana Worm. So Tice hasn't got a bad opening. Yeah, and, and Ecob actually just doesn't have the follow-up for the Mana Worm. Um, this, this matchup is so good for Mage because there is uh, not only the Mana Worm, but the Flame Cannon that can deal with the Shade or even a bigger minion like Ancient of Lore. Uh, like in the future of the game, but uh, he can also have Mirror Entity, he can lock Druid with the Secrets, and put Druid in a really tricky spot, but right now, if Thais just clears it with Wrath, he positions himself perfectly. Uh, he Is he going for Aspirin instead? Oh wow, that's also fine, I mean, if there is no spell, like from Thais' perspective, if there is no spell, you can actually kill the Mana Wraith um, next turn with Shapeshift, but there is a spell for Ika. Yeah, Flame Cannon would have been very dangerous as well, and Frostbolt. I don't know if there was... I mean, I don't know if, if killing the Mana Worm straight away was more important. Just based on, you know, what a Mana Worm can do <laughs> if it's left alone. If Ecop had the right answers, Flame Cannons, uh, Frostbolts, uh, it could have been pretty devastating for Tice, but I guess he has time, right, on his side. It's only the beginning of the game, and Wrath can be used next to him. Yeah, but uh, I think like this... Um... Unstable Portal actually put Ecob in a worse position than Arc uh, Arcan Missiles. So drawing into that was a bit awkward for him. If he would go with Arcan Missiles, he would be able to kill um, the Aspirant easily. And now he's just giving away the Worm, and Tice has an opportunity to play Acer Drake with Innervate. Yeah, he can answer Drake, and then he can just clear the Mana Worm, and then he has a 4 4 on the board. Uh, still quite vulnerable to Flame Cannon, I guess that's the only issue. Could cycle the Wrath here if he wanted as well, but I like this. Get that 4-4 body down, see if Ecop has an answer. Yeah, it's really good, and even if there is a Flame Cannon, which is probably the best answer, it's still off curve, so Ecop will just play the Flame Cannon and pass. And this will give Tice an opportunity to play the Temple BGH! <laughs> wow, what a man. Um, four two on the board is pretty decent, I suppose. It, it clears a flame waker, it clears a shredder, it clears an azure drake. So, you know that four power does challenge a lot of the tempo mage minions. Yeah. Uh, does he have an answer to it? To tempo bgh <laughs> or azure drake? Azure drake? No, it doesn't look like. What secret was that? I, I didn't quite see it go down. I think it was entity. I haven't seen it as well. Uh, by the way, if the bgh comes down, uh, which is not terrible overall, especially if there is a mirror entity. Uh, you kind of want to play your, your worst minion. Um, a BGH is one of those minions that you might consider playing. Then is the, the force tank in Ecop's hand. It's just waiting for its moment, right? Yeah, if you play BGH now, with that force tank, it's going to be brilliant. Uh, going to have that divine shield. It's going to be not threatened by the druid overall, just because uh, the only hard removal they have is that BGH when it comes to those big minions. But Tice goes to the Savage Road trying to test the counter spell first. So now he knows it's probably Mirror Entity. And maybe he can find a way to uh, get around it. Maybe squeeze in a Wrath uh, with another minion. But he's going to have to wait until turn 5 to do that with the BGH. Uh, to be honest, Ika was also playing duplicate, uh, duplicate at some point. So Tice might assume that's possible. Going for the cycle here. Just a clean... Okay. All right, so that was a duplicate. It is duplicate. That's not a bad minion to duplicate. That's a lot of pressure in the long term. Hmm. You can wrap this and draw a card, 
and you want to have a card because um, turn five. But he also provides with instead to, to be able to play uh, a seven drop faster. Oh wow! If this force tank comes down, it's gonna work out really nicely for Tyus. Force tank, if it comes down, you can BGH it, and then you can raft the BGH as well that comes from the mirror entity. Oh, there is oh a wait, no, the, no, the the secret's <laughs> gone. That, yeah. Sorry, that question mark confused me. So it doesn't <laughs> even matter now. So the big big game hunter is gonna find a lot of value if it does hit that force tank. And if you're Ecob, you just have to slam it, right? Because there's <laughs> only, only three cards in in Tyce's hand. You have to assume there is no big game hunter. Pilot, and it's so good if it sticks around yeah. for five mana. Yeah. Like, there's a good chance that it will never be answered. If there is no big hunter, you just get so much, so much value. But on the other hand, like, if you play it and then it's not answered, if Tyce has to go for face because you're already at 18, next turn you just play Pilot to Shredder and you uh, Flame Cannon and then just get the board back uh, before turn 7 and you have a good... Um, and you have an opportunity to just win right there. And Tyce is just laughing. <laughs> it's like, oh, you have a tank. Well, dwarves with shotguns deal with tanks quite easily, apparently. Oh yeah, if, you know, if you're on the on the hill and then just shoot it, divine shield doesn't matter. So is he going to cycle now on the one two? Yep. So he's going to find some more cards to play in his future turns. It's so, big... it's so awkward actually. <laughs> yeah, Iko was like, obviously he had a big hunter, but it's so awkward that. Uh, Ecob's at 14, and Tyus might just slaughter Ecob with... Ecob has so many good cards, right? But Tyus just can continue dealing that damage. He has a swipe still, he has force uh, of nature as well. Yeah, he has a lot of damage potential in his hand for the future, and Ecob being so low... Just force uh, face. Will be devastating. Go face. Force it's, face. Yeah, like, this is what you do. Like, Ecob will be at 4. What, what can you double do? swipe. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, Lothab can stop you, right? But... Um, all right, he's going for Lothab instead. Come on, force phase with more manly ties. That's something Admiral would do. Just force phase. I've seen him do it before. <laughs> yeah. Just complete man mode. But Tice is going for the safe play here. He knows he's got double swipe next turn. As long as one minion sticks around, uh, he'll be able to finish him off. Uh, not very common for these temple majors to have taunts. Uh, sometimes rare entity. Doctor Boom is green. <laughs> it looks like he's gonna just play him and pray. Uh, do you clear if you get an Annoyatron though? Uh, that will keep you around, right? It will keep you alive, but uh, or or will it? Like you still have Force of Nature and a ping, so for eight mana you can uh, basically shapeshift into Annoyatron and still he will have lethal. But um, yeah, Doctor Boom was probably the best play there from Ecop's perspective because he was so behind. But Tice is enough, obviously. Like he has five and everything, and Ecop really upset about this. That was his matchup. That was his best chance to win with this deck. I think the story of Ecop's uh, top four so far has been he's played into good matchups and not been able to find a win. Uh, he lost two good matchups against Oskaka in the first round. So yeah, it's pretty. T it's been pretty tough for him, uh, this uh, whole top four so far. Not finding those wins where he needs them. Absolutely. Um, and now Tice is down to his rogue deck. And rogue versus Temple Mage. Should be alright for the rogue. Yeah, I think the rogue uh, will have a good match going into this. What else does Ecop have left? Uh, Ecop... Has he won a game yet? Uh, yeah, he did win with. I think he won the first one, was it? Um, but what was, what was he using? The patron? Yeah, he won with the patron. So he still has the zoo that lost to the Reno Lock. And he still has this Temple Mage. So Rogue has got to find two wins against his two aggressive decks. Uh, not a lot of healing as well in this Rogue deck as we've seen. Uh, and Tice has struggled a little bit with it in this tournament. Yeah. And I think he, it was the same in the preliminaries as well. I think Rogue was one of the decks which was uh, kind of struggling with. Yeah, absolutely. Like Rogue is this weird deck that um, it, people bring because on paper it has good matchups versus uh, the lineups that people bring. And is a deck that can win versus Paladin. It, it, overall, it has good matchups, but uh, it, it whiffs like most of the time. Like you really need a coin, and um, a great player can pilot it and become the world champion sometimes. And uh, sometimes you can just go zero free with it. Yep, you can become the world champion as Oskaka did. And though Tice is very close to becoming the world champion himself, 
uh, piloting and Rogue. So Rogue is a deck that definitely benefits these kind of high skill players because you can see you can make these plays which uh, some people will not even see. And uh, we've already seen Oskaka do some fantastic plays today. Not even with Rogue, just with other decks. So yeah, I'm looking at the start here. Tice does have. Uh, backstab an SI, he does have prep, so if you find an Eviscerate, you'll be able to slow down Ecop, but double Mana Worm, that is a, a brilliant start for Ecop. That's the, that's what you want to see as a Tempo Mage. Oh yeah, it's uh, that double Mana Worm into Frostbolt, that's uh, really big, and not only that, he had that coin, so Rogue didn't have the coin. Uh, still, Tyson is having a really good opening anyway, even with that coin, Prep, Eviscerate, SI7, Backstab. Like, uh, here he can just Backstab, Weapon up, and kill one, one of the Worms. And then next turn he can just do the same thing and play SI7. And even kill a, a Mad Scientist, maybe. Or whatever is being played. Yeah, a lot of uh, great cards for Tice to deal with the pressure from Ecop at the start. I mean, back-to-back -back Mana Wins, followed by a Frostbolt or a Mad Scientist, is usually the god draw. But Tice just has the answers to them, and it's uh, not... This is the thing Rogue can do, though. This is one of the strengths of Rogues. It can actually deal with these very, sometimes unbeatable starts from very aggressive decks. Yeah, especially with, with this hand. And if Tice picks up something for turn 4, like a Violet Teacher or Tomb Pillager, Eco might just concede there. It will be so tough. Like, if Eco goes for something like a Flame Waker, and then there's like Eviscerate into that Flame Waker with a big minion being played on the board at the same time. You may get the free free if that's more entity, right? Does it work in the same way as Fire Elemental with SI7? Uh, I've seen it, uh, so I guess it would be the duplicate that he got here. So that tells Tice a lot already about what he has down. That's a lot of information for him. Well, Eviscerate is not ideal. <laughs> Just weapon no. up. No. <laughs> Tomb Pillager would have been fantastic. Uh, by that teacher, of course. So, although Tice had this very kind of explosive start to deal with the, the pressure from Ecop, he doesn't have anything to follow it up on turn four. So that might be the breathing room Ecop needs now going forward in this game. Oh man, that teacher! If that would actually hit <sighs> last turn, but still, this turn it's it's pretty good. If um, if you go for it with prep and this raid, uh, Tice decided not to prep this raid. I guess if you know that stupid cut now, you want to hit something. Uh, with a little less value. Shredder's a good target for Duplicate. Flame Wake is a good target for Duplicate. So uh, maybe if this Shredder does go into the Belcher and something weaker drops, he can uh, just clear that out instead. And then Ecop doesn't get uh, the value he needs. Wow, Keeper. Don't see that very often. Yeah, Keeper is pretty good. Silence might be useful. Or just uh, damage and then a tool for minion. Uh, quite unlucky for him to hit Belcher twice. And now Tys has a lot of opportunities here. Violet Teacher into Prep Eviscerate into Eviscerate. So which is he going to give him? Is he going to give him the... I guess you give him the Flame Waker, right? Mm, that's dangerous. I don't know if the... Pro like, Flame Waker is... Uh, yeah, I, I agree with giving him a Shredder. Because Shredder is 4 mana, so it's harder to play it. And then Flame Wakers can generate so much damage, and uh, and they can just steal your board out of nowhere. And with Shredders, you can always sub them. <laughs> Ecop is disgusted by those Eviscerates. Why does Tice have everything? <laughs> he just deals with anything I play. Ecop seem a bit frustrated, especially with the start Tice had against yeah. that strong mana wave. And then Ecop's like, right, I've got duplicate, I've got some stuff going on, make things awkward for him. Nah, he just deals with it. And Tice, Tice, for a moment, he looked like a boss. Like, uh, most, uh, when, he, when he was playing versus Pavel, and uh, earlier when he was playing versus Ecop, he was concerned, he was like shaking his head. But then after that play, he was like, yeah, I've got this. Like, I've got this game, it's easy. Another Flame Waker would be fantastic here, and... Uh, with the arcane missiles, he can probably curb a lot of these one ones. Uh, he still has an opportunity for another spell. They all miss. All right, he gets the uh, the the flame hits on the one ones, and now he needs to decide: does he want to drop a scientist, or does he want to go for some more uh, shots with the flame waker? I guess he wants to use flame waker um, when it's live, so to, to get a bit more value. But on the other hand, the belcher can easily deal with it, so maybe just. Uh, Get the value from the ping. You can cast the portal later. 
And the portal actually fits the, the curve on the next turn. He will have 7 mana so he can play Pilot Shredder. Or like por portal first, see what he gets, and then Shredder and Keeper. Unless Lofeb comes down, True. I guess. And then he just runes e cops a perfect curve there. 5-5 uh, five, five coming down with no spell response. It's very strong. Uh, he can deal with this Flame Waker quite efficiently, just with the Teacher and the Weapon Charge. And then Ecop does have... He does have a Shredder, he does have a one-cost Keeper, so he uh, might be able to... The double ping, if he feels like this a Teacher is going to get too out of hand. There's a lot of different thing, ways Ecop can play next turn. Yeah, but the problem is... Yeah. They are both playing tempo decks, and right now Ecop, even though he has more cards, he's uh, losing on tempo. Uh, Tys is the one attacking, and Ecop will be one, uh, the one who has to defend himself. Uh, where Tys has a Blade Flurry as well. If he picks uh, something like a weapon removal, he'll be in a very good shape. Like a we like basically weapon buff, not removal. Weapon buff, and then Flurry this board. Oh man! Speak of the devil. Can't get the combo though, which is a little unfortunate. You would have, probably would have wanted that extra bit of damage, but can you ask for much more at this point? Yeah, it's still uh, 8 damage to face, and uh, with your board, it's 15 total. Uh, unless uh, you really want to clear whatever drops from Shredder. Does he clear the Shredder first? That's what I'm curious about. Yeah, it's good, because if there is something like uh, with Stealth, you want to deal with it. <laughs> that actually affects Ecop more than Tice at this point, but just getting the full clear is very nice here. And again, like you said, Tice is in le the lead here with the tempo. Ecop has all these cards in hand. Fireball might be a nice way just to answer this low feb at the moment. You can squeeze in a shredder as well, which is uh, really nice. So now Tice is looking a little awkward. He needs a good top deck like a sprint to kind of get back on board and get back in this game. Yeah, Ecop. Still has a chance after the Blade Flurry top deck. This means that Tys can deal free damage this turn, but we'll just have to rely on the top deck overall. And he did use double Eviscerate already. Uh, one Tinkers. Um, with something like a second Tinkers or Deadly Poison, he'll be able to squeeze in a bit more damage. But he himself is at 18. I think he only runs one Tinkers in this deck. I think he cut one of the Tinkers with Dr. Boom. I don't remember seeing two Tinkers in the game against Pavel. Oh, and yeah, we right. saw his entire deck, so not even the Tinkers is a way out at the moment. He's going to need uh, Deadly Poison, probably. Or just like sprint into Deadly Poison. Deadly Poison would definitely be great. Jacob is taking advantage of this uh, quiet, uh, quiet turn from, from Tys. And just uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice into Arcane Intellect will be interesting. But then you can also go Unstable Portal. I think if you decide to go Portal, you go with Portal first. If he goes for Apprentice and then there is a Deadly Poison from Tyus, that would be quite deadly. <laughs> deadly indeed. He does uh, clear the board very efficiently here. Prep is such a whiff draw here. And this may be the end of Tyus's Rogue Run against this Temple Mage. Without, uh, without a sprint coming next turn, uh, things are not looking good as you can tell. <laughs> He's just like, really? This is what happens when you play Rogue, guys. Preps just pop up on the top and he's just like... <sighs> yeah, it's literally welcome to Rogueland. How much damage is it? Not enough yet, not enough. But with Arcane Intellect or a good um, portal, maybe Ecop can find that damage. That's 5 plus 10, 15. He needs free damage, basically. Like a, a Fireball, a second Frostbolt. Oh, I think that's it. With Fireball and the Frostbolt, that's it. So basically, that's why some people do not bring Rogue to tournaments. It can whiff, just like that. And that's the worst way for it to whiff, right? Preps off the top. So this is a win for Ecop. He ties it up 2 2 going into the last game. And Ecop, look how stressed he looks. He's just like, wow, how did I win that? Yeah, right? Like, <laughs> it, it seems perfect for Ties with the backstabs and SIs and big flurry. Maybe the fact that he actually went for the shredder instead of going for face. Maybe that was the moment where well, you obviously cannot predict that you will whiff on the draws and you will get trapped into Blade Flurry, but maybe because he didn't have enough cards, it would give him a, a better chance to go for face, but uh, it's not a misplay at all. It's obviously just a different line of play uh, that will have maybe a different outcome d depending on the card drawn. But fortunately for Ecop, Things went his way, and now we're into the final game of the third place match. One of these players is going to be winning $1,500, and Ty starts off with the coin, which is a 
big part of this matchup for the row, getting that coin, be able to SI7 some of those earlier minions. But he doesn't have the SI7 yet. Do you hard mulligan for that card? I'm thinking like you can definitely throw a tomb Azure on Azure. I'm only thinking about keeping fun of knives being ties because fun of knives is your your best tool to respond to an implosion and a drag card drag card as well, or like to spiders and stuff. So keeping fun of knives makes sense, but on the other hand, deadly poison SI seven might be more important for you. Backstab yeah, deadly even. poison. Yeah, backstab. Those are the key cards. Fun of knives is an efficient way to deal with implosion. Uh, you might keep hold of that just for that card. That card can be a bit of a nuisance. Oh, you keep some pill I don't mind keeping the pillager as well because you just want to be able to play some bodies. Right. Ties his response then to his hand like, why haven't I drawn an SI or even a backstab just to deal with this stuff? Yeah, but on the other hand, he might be happy about seeing the abusive. Um... Oh, he, got, he gets a prep. Like, overall, prep is really good versus aggro decks because you can do shenanigans like a free eviscerate or maybe a, f a free blade flurry when you need it after playing a minion or before you play a minion if you go for a big Edwin. Big Edwin is one of the strategies you can actually apply versus zoo decks. We haven't seen Iron Beak or have we seen Iron Beak from ECOP? There was one Iron Beak, I think. I don't recall it, but I'm pretty sure you can squeeze in an Iron Beak in zoo these days. There's so many silence targets right at the meta. It's just one of those auto includes and aggros, I think, just to deal with those taunts. But, like you said, a big Van Cleef might be something Tice can consider, depending on what his next card is. He might just draw a spell to go nicely with that prep, uh, coin out the Van Cleef into like an 8-8 or something. And then e has to deal with an 8-8, which is a bit of a nuisance for a deck that doesn't pack something like Big Game Hunter. There was a game in the qualifier, another qualifier in the group stages, where... I think Orange went for an 8-8 Van Cleef, but uh, his opponent playing Zoo actually had a silence, <laughs> and that was where the game ended. I, I think I recall that as well. I was just kind of visualizing that match, and I can almost visualize Orange looking very upset to that. <laughs> but yeah, he doesn't find the spell he needs to make the big Van Cleef, so the dagger's just going to come out here, clear that 2-1 two, clear that two one up, and then potentially next turn he can find the spell he needs to b make the big Van Cleef. Even a Pillager um, should be alright all next turn. If you cannot get a big Van Cleef, just go for the coin Pillager. You know you're going to get the coin back, and a 5-4 is still threatening enough for, for Zoo to do something about it. Unless the Rubin Egg, and then that might be troublesome. Ruby Knight sets up a bit of insurance recop in case there's any clears in the future, but you can also powerful whelm to activate it. And this is another prep. Preps yeah. have not uh, <laughs> been shown up at the wrong time for Tyus uh, in the last two games. Yeah, this is uh, welcome to Rogueland. Dice was laughing like, what, what is this even? Do I prep a prep? Like, <laughs> prep, prep, coin. Blade Flurry. <laughs> Prep Blade... He can, ah, he can't double Blade Flurry. He can make just the giant Van Cleef and just have a Pillager and a Falmas left in his hand. Yeah. And this Pillager is just going to die to Power of Whelming, so... Ecop is nodding his head. It looked really bad last game, but suddenly... After winning that Mage game, he is in a really good position to take this one. And he gets the uh, Imp boss as well, so curves out really nicely, clears the board and has quite a threatening board of, him, uh, of his own, so Tice needs a good response to this, and right now preps are not going to do it. Deadly Poison would be nice because he has a Thalnus. Um, Eviscerate can stall the game a bit. Can he go for that Van Cleef with that Eviscerate drawn? So prep into Eviscerate, that's two spells. You kill the 4-4, what else do you do? Um, you, can you can drop Thalnos because you'll need card draw, drop the coin, you'll have enough mana for, for Edwin, and I guess Edwin after that. You end up with a Flare in your hand and the Prep in your hand, and, um, and Thalnos on board to draw some cards. Yeah, I guess you could, yeah, you could go for that, that's a, quite a big Edwin. Coin, yeah, coin Thalnos, Prep of this right, Edwin. You might even attack into Voidwalker for one, because when you do it, you prepare um, Flurry to clear Voidwalker next turn to be able to attack and connect with Edwin to face. Is he going for the... Oh, he's going to clear the 2-4. Okay, is he going for a Flurry here? Into Coin Edwin? Oh, he's going all in here, guys. <laughs>
This is the all in play from Ty's Mega Van Cleef gonna come out. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, what can I do with all these preps and coins? Oh man, and he comes is like, what? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, how? Mega Van Cleef. Well, he got Defender of Argus, so um, he can still top it for a moment. But if Ty's gets something like a Deadly Poison, and he has two draws. This is ballsy. This is like, he is playing for 1,500 and he puts all the faith into the one Van Cleef. Let's be, let's be fair though, how long can you wait around as Tice at this point? With he constantly playing minions, constantly drawing cards, if he decides to go down a tap route to kind of replenish his hand. I don't, uh, if Tice had like two more bad draws, he would have just been out of the game. I think Tice went for a play that has potential to win in the game. Absolutely. I mean, Argus, of course, does stop him, in, stop him in his tracks, but if Argus wasn't there, uh, things would look really kind of shaky for Ecop at this point. Yeah, and now Ecop needs to race. Um, how dangerous is Thalonus for him? He ignores Thalonus, he just goes for face, he knows he's racing. SI, okay, that's not what you want to see at this point. And Thal actually, the fact that Thalonus survived will give a really good flurry to Thais, and he will be able to connect to face. And this is what he wanted. He's yeah. going to be able to squeeze in the damage as well with the flurry. Extra one. Uh, gets a clear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cops reaction like, really? <laughs> yeah, the fact that Ecop didn't kill Edwin, um, I think it costs him the game. So basically, no, not like Edwin, like the fact that he didn't kill Thanos, but he gets Defender of Argus now. Second Argus. Oh, man. Uh, Goes to the tap as well. Oh, so this Argus is gonna be the decider of where he can stay in this game. And... There's a deadly poison, so SI deadly, and that's basically it. On the back of the big Edwin, the European champion takes the third place in Harston Champions League. <laughs> Dice is so happy, <laughs> he could, cannot believe it. But honestly, Aqua, if he would kill that Thalnos. It would have been different. It would have been a different game. A very different game. And it just goes to show how one decision can uh, change everything. The, that one decision was the difference between zero money and $1,500. Absolutely. I, I think he will have nightmares about that Thalmus. He will dream about the game where he actually attacks this 1-1 one -one with a Voidwalker. Because leaving spell damage on the rogue side can can hurt you. I can just imagine this dream of like the uh, Voidwalker hitting the Thalmus and then just dollars ringing over <laughs> Ecom. He's just looking in the sky with bliss in his eyes. Like, look at all this money. Like a pinata, like right? <laughs> Basically, a, you hit a it and it of money falls on him as he kills the Falnos and secures the game. But well done to Tyus, you know, he made a very strong Van Cleef play, did the best he could with such a clunky hand and manages to take third place. So, excellent game from both of them. I really enjoyed that series. Yeah, that was amazing. And now, guys, we have one more match for you because we still have to crown our champion. Coming up next is Kaka, the world champion, versus Pavel from Russia, who is still hungry for his big tournament win, but a great player indeed, who has a really good chance to win versus Kaka in that final. So give us a couple of minutes and we'll be back with that match for you.